my romaine lettuce, I guess, is where, is, is where I'm getting most of my omegas when I really like look at, when I do the, break, the nutritional breakdown. Um, I also really love zucchini when it's in season, and that has some, some really good, um, you know, omega type profiles in it as well. Uh, so, I never really, uh, you know, focus on singular nutrients per se. I mean, if I, I suppose if I develop an issue, then I'll look in, look into it and see if I'm lacking something. Um, but I, I more so try to just eat whole foods because I think also, I mean, you, I'm sure you know this. Like we're we're so overly reductionist with our nutrition these days of like, oh well, this this food has X nutrient. So we need to eat this, you know, but, but we have to look at it, it's, it's a package deal, you know. Um, a, a brick of iron has a lot of iron in it, it doesn't mean I should eat the brick of iron, you know. So, um, but yeah, my, my greens uh, and vegetables are, are so important for, for like, for the nutrients and the minerals and, and, and all of those. I get my protein from plants is the short answer. Um, I. You know, I eat fruits and I eat uh, vegetables and greens, and that's there's there's protein inherent in, in everything that that's a whole food. Uh, I think our, our nutrition, and like the way that we look at nutrition, is is very reductionist. We we tend to to look at an an apple and say this is a fruit, and then we look at you know tofu or God forbid an animal's body and we say this is a protein. You know, and, and really there's, every food is going to have all of the, the carbohydrates, protein, fat within it, unless it's a highly, highly processed food. And so there's protein in fruit, there's protein in, in grains, there's protein in everything. And I actually get probably, because I, I love greens and I eat so much lettuce, um, I even get more grams of protein than is, you know, the, the minimum recommended daily allowance uh, just because of how I enjoy eating my greens. Um, the lovely thing about plant protein is that it's not damaging. Animal protein is is incredibly disease forming. But um, so that's where I get my protein, and, and a lot of times it's interesting. People will say, "Well, you know, where do you get your protein if not from meat? And where do you get your calcium if not from dairy? And uh, where do you get your omegas if not from fish?" And, and the the simple way of looking at it is, is, where did the fish get the omegas? Where did the cow get? The, you know, her calcium. Um, where did the meat get its protein? And it's always it's always plants. So um, what we're doing by by eating the plants is we're we're cutting out the middle animal. We're going to the source, you know, and that is far more efficient. And it's also it's interesting. And I, I know I don't know if I said this in a different thread, but I'm going to say it again anyway. Um, we always want like brand new shiny things, and but when it comes to our nutrition, for some reason. We want it second hand. We want, I call it the hand-me-down nutrition. We want to filter it through some other animal's body and then and then consume it. And somehow we think that that is a higher quality of protein. You know, you hear the whole, the whole complete protein. You know, we need animal, eat animals for the complete protein. And, you know, the animals, you know, elephants, rhinos, these giant creatures are, are eating plants and they're doing a very good job of creating complete proteins out of plants so we can do the very same thing um, and, and we don't have to have it filtered through someone else's body and with all of the the extra you know saturated fat cholesterol and everything that comes with consuming the animals so I just do I follow you know the gorillas and the, and the elephants and, and all of them and I I go to the source and I, I go to what makes them healthy and big and strong and I just eat the plants, which are inherently going to have the protein, as long as we eat enough calories, we're, we cannot help but get adequate protein. So my fitness routine varies a lot, just kind of based on, on what feels right or what I'm interested in. But right now what I'm doing is I, um, I ride my bike in the mornings most of the time. I, I have some really beautiful trails where I've moved. It used to be that I, I just would bike to get places and, and where I lived I'd have to go about you know 45 minutes an hour one way to get wherever I needed to be. Uh, and now I live in a town where everything's pretty close so I just go for rides on these, these really gorgeous trails. Uh, and then I also do weight training and that's something I've always enjoyed. I, um, I was a competitive gymnast as a kid and I did wrestling in high school and, um, and different forms of dance. So um, I've always really liked, you know, kind of intense type of, of workouts to an extent. 
Uh, so I like to do, you know, heavy, heavier weights. Um, I do that. And then only recently because I'm, I'm preparing for, um, you know, a photo shoot with a friend of mine, uh, I've also incorporated some um, Tabata training. So like the kind of very intense interval things, which is not, it's a love hate with that. Uh, but for the most part, I just kind of go with what, what feels good. And I do yoga as well. Um, I try to open my day with yoga. It doesn't always happen, but it's, um, to me, that's equally, if not more, of a, a mental practice than a, a physical one to a great extent. You can build muscle on a vegan diet. Everyone wants to solve world hunger, but we also want to, you know, eat our, our meat, dairy, and eggs and, and all of those things, and that's what's taking food away from the hungry.